Welcome back. Today I have a manga haul to showcase. Half of this is stuff I've ordered personally on my own and the other half, the larger stack, are birthday presents from my boyfriend and another friend. So I want to thank them so much for buying all this stuff for me. So I'm going to start off this haul with some novels. These are five novels from the series. I think the first one is Monogatari. I'm not 100% sure but we have Neko Monogatari. Uh, Koyomi Monogatari, Kizu Monogatari, Owari Monogatari, and Volume 2, or Part 2 of Owari Monogatari. No idea what the order is. Um, the covers are really pretty. This is not an anime that I've watched, but according to my friend, these are the novels that the anime is based off of, which I think is pretty cool that the, um, these novels are now being translated for fans to read. I know that was something that was really popular when a series based on light novels started getting anime. A lot of people had to go and translate the, the Japanese novels that did not have an official English release, so you would see a lot of downloadable files of the actual novels. The translations would vary depending on who was translating them, so which was always an issue on how you would interpret certain things in, in the series. So it's pretty cool that um, they're not being officially translated. This was by Cole Ransom. Daniel Joseph. That one doesn't have a credit. Cole Ransom. Cole Ransom. Okay. And I flipped through a couple of these. They, they seem pretty well written, I would say. This one has a weird yellow tint at the top. Um... But yeah, these were bought by my boyfriend, so thank you to him for buying these. Again, I have not seen this anime. I kind of took it off my plan to watch list just because I realized it wasn't something that I was that interested in. Um, but I think I'd be more willing to read the story than watch it. So that's definitely now something I have to do. The next few are from another friend. We'll start off with a big one. This is Puella Magi Season 1. There is a second series, which technically is not a Season 2, but it's supposedly a continuation based on the mobile game. I didn't really follow that game, so and I didn't finish the series. I got up to Episode 3 and that was it. But I love the original series. And unfortunately, it's so expensive. I ended up buying a bootleg version a couple years back, or maybe last year. I know I had a video of it where I took apart things about bootlegs that popped out to me. But yeah, this is like $120-something or something, possibly more. So the fact that he actually bought this for me is crazy. I'm so grateful because I was never going to buy this on my own. I've had it on my list just because I'm, I need to be reminded that it exists. Um, I can see why fans were a little upset though. Anaplex series, which is the company that licenses this series, has a bad habit of releasing mediocre Blu-ray releases at exorbitant prices. So if a series is ever licensed by Anaplex, expect to not see it under $100 at, upon release, which is really sad because they license a lot of really neat series such as The Promised Neverland. So there is a card and that's pretty much it. I mean the design of the box is really cool but it's honestly kind of flimsy considering how much you're paying for this. The cases feel a little sturdier than the standard Blu-ray cases. Um, but I am happy to finally own this officially. I've kept those bootleg ones just because they work, but I don't think they would play on official Blu-ray players or like the PS4. They do play on my computer though, but this is now the official release I will be using. For anyone who has not seen this series, I highly do recommend it. It is Magical Girl, but upon episode 3 it gets a bit dark. Um, the plot though is very interesting and I do recommend it. Next, I have volume 1 of hopefully I pronounced this right, Param Itan, Tales from Beyond. The synopsis reads, Yamagishi and Sento are schoolmates and that's about all they have in common. One is a down-to-earth guy in the boxing club while the other is a brainy bookish conspiracy nut. But when they stumble across something weird and explicable after class one evening, it seems they'll have to set their differences aside in order to uncover the truth behind the mysterious creatures and strange figure prowling the school grounds. This is rated teen for teen. And the cool thing about this one is that um, the colored page at the beginning is 
This is standard paper. It's not a glossy page. Like, I just like the look of that a lot. I was initially attracted to this manga due to the art style, but flipping through this, it looks pretty cool. I've been, I'm trying to get into buying manga again, so usually I'll buy one or two volumes of a series to see if I like it, and if not, I won't buy any more. Or if I, I feel like it's not worth it, I'll just read it online. Um, but if so, I'll keep buying volumes, so I'm excited to read that. Next is I'm Great Priest Imhotep by Makoto Morishita. Again, I liked this one because of the art style. The character looked really cool on the cover. And the story sounded interesting, although I don't remember what it is. Oh. <laughs> But what's neat about this one is that um, the main protagonist is a girl this time around. It kind of reminds me of older, early 2000s stories with a female protagonist and a crazy supernatural partner. So the summary reads, From the sands of ancient Egypt to the streets of modern Japan, the newly resurrected great priest Imhotep traverses time and space on the hunt for the Magi, devious beings with an appetite for destruction who impersonate the gods, when schoolgirl Hinome crosses paths with this illustrious ancient, is her lonely lifestyle about to change for the better or the worse? This is rated T for Teen and is published by Yen Press. So this sounds interesting. I'm going to give it a go, and if so, I'll buy another volume. The next few are not safe for work. Um, if you are under 18, I don't recommend watching this part, but I'm going to show it anyway because it is part of the gift. So my friend bought me volumes 7, 8, and 9 of Don't Be Cruel. I have the other volumes to this series. It starts off very generic, yaoi, boys love story-wise. If you've ever read this genre, you know what I'm talking about. But as you read on, it gets a lot more realistic, I, I guess I would say. I, I grew to like the characters, especially the main couple. Um, and yeah, it just... The longer it went on, the more I started to like it a lot more. It, it stops being very tropey, although the characters themselves can still be a little tropey, especially the, um, this guy. Uh, but Maya especially grows up a lot and changes over the series, but it's still really cute to read, especially if you just want to have something positive to look at. So I think I'm caught up up to volume 8 because I have been reading it online so I will be very excited to read number 9. And because these are later volumes I don't think I can really summarize this for y'all. It's just a romance series. They meet in high school. Um, Maya, which is the bad boy here, the taller guy, um, he bullies his crush into dating him essentially and devious stuff happens but eventually they reconcile and start dating for real and it's turns into a very cute story. This next one I'm not saying out loud because I might get flagged, but it's by Ogaretsu Tanaka. This one's just funny. I am really into stories that are just so stupid because it genuinely makes me laugh when they make it work. Like it's so, I've read so many ridiculous stories that I've genuinely enjoyed and would want to own just because it was so stupid and funny. Rated mature for a reason. Um, if you want to read the summary, you can, but it's pretty much pornography with a touch of comedy and a, a very funny love story, especially with this guy. So the next few that I have, I bought from various places. This first one I bought from Right Stuff Anime. I pre-ordered it a long time ago and it finally released. This is Sarazanmai, Ryo and Mabu. This is a side story to the Sarazanmai anime series. It revolves around these two adopting the the idol character from that series. I don't think like it it's supposed to be a, a prequel. As people have said it is, but it kind of if you treat it as a prequel, it messes up the continuity a little. But it is very cute and these two cop characters were so funny in the anime that I just wanted something extra from them. They act like adoptive parents in this series. In this in this volume I mean. And it's really cute. So there's that one. Let's see. It says, hilarious spin-off manga to the anime by acclaimed director Kunihiko Ikuhara. Police officers Ryo and Mabu are surprised when they find a baby lying on a plate in the street. They take her in as they search for her parents, but their bizarre new life keeps leading them into wild directions. 
Strangely, this baby, who they name Sada, seems to have supernatural powers, and these two men are starting to love her as if they were her own. And this is rated teen, no age specified. So I would recommend this. The art is cute. If you've watched Sada's on my, that is. Next is The Way of the House Husband, Volume 3. This is still a hilarious series to me, so I've been buying all the new volumes that come out. It's by Viz Media. Wow. That makes sense. The art is still top notch. The gags are still funny, so I would still recommend this series. It's about a former Yakuza boss slash gang member um, becoming a domestic house husband and all the hijinks that ensue from <laughs> him treating housework like being a Yakuza boss. <laughs> Next, I have volumes one and two of Fairy Tale Battle Royale. I bought this one from eBay, um, as well as the next few volumes that I'll show. This is by Soraho Ina, and I was attracted by the plot line. Who will be the last fairy tale standing? Kuninaka Aoba, a mercilessly bullied ninth grader, receives a magical contract that grants her greatest wish. But at what cost? Suddenly, Aoba is thrust down a rabbit hole into a strangely familiar world from children's stories. Only this version comes with a dark and gruesome twist. In this wonderland, it's kill or be killed in a dark fairy tale fight for survival. So yeah, it's another spin on a dark fairy tale theme, which is very common nowadays. I think some people are getting sick of it. I still like them. Um, and the fact that it's like a little girl actually being put into the place of Alice needing to fight. I was really interested how the fights were going to go about and I know other fairy tale characters are going to show up at some point as proven by volume 2. There's a boy on the cover. So it was all this and then also the art style that got me interested. I really like the watercolor-esque background scenes. So I'm very excited to read this and I might do an ASMR review um, once I do, this is published by Seven Seas Entertainment, and it's rated T for Teen. So I'm sure there's violence, but not too much for my younger viewers. And the last of the manga is volumes three through six of The Girl from the Other Side by Nagabe. I've I read the first two volumes of this, I think, last year or the year before. My boyfriend got me them from Kinukunya. And I loved it. I, I don't know what it is. It's just a very quiet story with so much mystery that I was hooked. But I, I'm i cheap, so I didn't buy the next few volumes until I saw a listing on eBay that had all the ones that I wanted in the next part of the series. So I'm excited to read this. The art style is just so interesting. It's like storybook-esque. And I love how simple the color schemes are. All of these covers are beautiful and I'm really hoping that an anime gets made of this at some point. I've seen people create animatics online from the manga panels and they look really cool. Um, I don't want to spoil too much because that is the mystery to this series but the title basically tells you the plot. Um, in this universe I think humans live outside of a forest and if you cross the threshold between this forest and um, where they live, there's like a, the air in there infects living beings or something. I can't remember specifically. Um, but this girl lives with this guy, this demon looking thing. If he touches her, it'll infect her. Um, so they can never touch. Otherwise she'll die. And the series follows them in their everyday life while this little girl slowly but surely figures out, you know, she's different from this guy that she loves so much. And this guy trying to protect her while also trying not to touch her and stuff like that. Stuff happened in volume 2 that kind of contradicts this. Um, but I'm excited to read why. Which I'm sure these volumes will cover. So yeah, that is one recommendation for me as well. And the last two things I actually forgot I, I received. Um, so they weren't in the stack in the beginning. So I'll start with this one. I have Sarazanmai, the actual anime. Recently released on Blu-ray DVD. Or just Blu-ray and digital. I talked about this series before and um, I don't think I can really recommend it because it's really really weird um, but it's so entertaining. It's by the same guy behind Mawaru Penguin Drum which is my all-time favorites and also Revolutionary Girl Utena. Oh that's awesome. I love, love that.
It's a series that really focuses on the characters and their relationships. And um, a theme of it is um, love and connections. This is really cute. I love it. Good job, Funimation. It's only 12 episodes, so if you are curious, be prepared for a lot of butt stuff. You'll know what I mean right from the first episode. But it's a short, entertaining watch, and I do recommend it if you are willing. <laughs> Next, I have My Hair Academia um, Two Heroes. This is the first My Hair Academia movie. I have seen the second one. I actually went to go see it in theaters with my sister, and it was great. But it, I don't think it's been released on DVD yet, or Blu-ray, I mean. So I did buy the first one, mainly because my brother had never seen it. And he's just not willing to watch it with subtitles. So I'm like, well, you're never going to see this unless I buy it. So let me just buy it. <laughs> I don't mind having it in my collection. It was a pretty good movie. I like the poster that they added there. Um, I can't really say anything because spoilers, um, it mainly focuses them on a rescue mission. They have to rescue All Might and then there's a big fight at the end that's really cool. If you're not familiar with My Hero Academia, it's like superheroes um, in school and in training. <laughs> and then the last thing in this haul is not anime or manga, but I wanted to show it anyway because it's really cool. My boyfriend bought me this. We've been playing Code Vein together since it does have online capability. At first I was like, what is this? <laughs> I just thought he got me something random from the mall or something um, because he does that a lot. But this is actually a blood bead from Code Vein, which in the game, um, they're how vampires consume blood other than directly from humans. This is the main way that they're able to stay alive and not go into a frenzy. It's really cool. I didn't know Code Vein had actual merchandise. I mean, I'm sure there's like pins and buttons and stuff. And I know there's an EO figure, uh, but I didn't know they had stuff like this. So this is really cool. I think it's kind of weird that they put a keychain on it because this is pretty heavy. I'm not going to hang that up from anything. I'm probably going to just display it somewhere on the table, maybe with a light at the bottom to accentuate this frost shape. But I really like it. 